and welcome. My name is Ryan O'Rourke and I hope you enjoy. If you have any questions along the way, please feel free to send me a message here on YouTube or on my Facebook page. I'd be more than happy to help out. And if you want to share your work with me, please feel free to leave a link to that or send me a picture. I'd love to see it and help you in any way that I can. All of that being said, let's get into it. I'm going to start with a very small brush. One edge is flat, the other is very thin. And what we're going to do with this is start by creating the base of our branches coming out along the painting. And something to note here, you can always make it larger, but it's really difficult to make smaller. So you want to start with a really small brush such as this. And we're going to begin with a very dark pigment. So I have black here on my brush, and I'm just going to go in, start moving it around, pushing it up. Rarely trees are straight, so I'm trying to have mine go at kind of a little bit of an angle, and if you can include little bumps in it, that is also advised. Now I'm still just moving it upwards here. You want to create a lot of random shapes, a lot of splitting. So we're going to play with that. I'm also keeping a good amount of water on my brush throughout this process because it makes the paint apply so much more smoothly. And as you get to the top of the branches here, you'll note that I'm kind of stopping because it gets to the point where this brush is too large and you want it to be much smaller. So I'm just kind of creating the large initial branches for this cherry blossom tree. And then later we will move on to um, a smaller brush. I'm sorry, um, I'm not used to talking and painting at the same time. So I, I get a little bit confused um, as to where I am within my sentences. And I do apologize. We will get better at that. And these tutorials will be slightly more manageable to watch. Until then, I thank you for watching them here with me. I do appreciate that. Now you notice that I did get a little bit of a smaller branch here, and that's because I had a lot of water on my brush and I felt confident in just using like a corner of it to extend the tree, and that's what I'm doing here. Now, is it wise to do this? Not really, but if you have some practice and you're feeling a little advantageous, then perhaps it is something you can play with. And I, I guess at this point, the majority of this tutorial is in real time. I think that's kind of interesting. That's something we haven't played with before. Uh, but anyway, you notice that I'm just branching it off. I'm picking various areas. I'm trying not to connect them here like that um, because you want it to look a little more natural, a little more random. But doing that on the occasion is all right. Now I want mine to droop out over the water and here I just want you to note that I'm overlapping it. Overlapping is key. Trees overlap all the time, and I think it's imperative. So I'm dragging it down. The weight of the tree is pulling it one way or another. You don't have to do that. You can have your tree in whatever position you want. Um, it can be straight up, it can be around, and see there, I messed up. I made it really large. We can remedy that sometimes. If it's still really wet, I made my brush really watery, and I'm just going to push the paint with it hopefully into a straight area or cover it with water and then take it off. That only works on occasion and as you can see it kind of took out some of the stars here. So that's why we move to a much smaller brush as we get into the smaller branches. Now I'm just going to finish this large area and speed up the process here for you so you don't have to listen to me ramble and then I will talk to you in the next step. Now I'm moving into a much smaller brush and here you can barely even see the tip of it or in my finger. And this is a round brush, although it's pretty much just a tip here. Um, but you, you can continue using a uh, flat sided brush. However, I just find this to be a little bit easier for doing the detail work around here. 
Now, in the time since we last spoke, you notice that I crossed them over a lot, I did a lot of interchanging, and I kind of made it a little bit messy, and that is completely okay. We will be covering all of this up with various flowers or leaves. And so, it's really okay to have fun, play with different ideas, but just make sure that you're keeping it fairly organic and random. You want everything to be going off its in, in its own direction. Um, there, I'm stuttering and I'm using the word um. <laughs> that is the issue here with recording this as I paint. But let me know if you like this type of style or if you like me to kind of dub over the painting once I'm finished. Here you kind of get a more natural flow of things where in the other it's a little more professional and laid out. It's up to you because I'd be more than happy to accommodate you all in any way that I can. And there, see, even with a small brush, I made a mistake. I made that a little too large. But we can remedy that by just continuing it upwards until we get to smaller branches again. We can kind of act like it was intentionally a large branch. So that just means extending the rest of the branch. Again, we can always make things wider, but it's really difficult to make things smaller again. So again, I'm just going to continue finishing up all of the miniature branches and then we will talk again. Now I'd say that we have the majority of the silhouette done within the tree and now we have to start making it three-dimensional, adding a light side and a dark side, which means we're having going which means we're going to have various tones. And so I've decided that my light is going to be coming this way towards the painting. And so perhaps it's the moon casting a light, perhaps it's an artificial light, but however the case, the light source is right here and it's going that way. Which means this side of the tree is going to be the darkest where the front here will be the brightest. So on my branches, this side of the tree will be brighter than this side. So I'm going to make this side much darker and I'm going to add lighter colors to here. Now, because it is three dimensional, I might have more of the middle of the tree bright with both sides dark, but this side is certainly going to be the darkest of the three areas within the tree. And I'm going to do that with the majority of my branches and I'm going to start with this little brush right here. Now, again, you can use either of the other two brushes. It's a matter of convenience and what you enjoy. Now I'm going to begin with a mixture of brown and white with water. Now, trees are very rarely ever actually brown, and so I'd advise you to use kind of a plethora of colors and different mixtures, including grays and greens, because if you go up to a tree in real life and you look at the bark, very rarely is it ever actually just a brown. However, because this is a tutorial for simplicity's sake and it's not on color, I'm going to use a lot of brown in this. However, I would advise, again, that you use a wide variety of color. Now, I'm kind of just rubbing in all of this color, I'm not being neat with it, and that's okay, because bark is organic, it's not really neat, if you have different strokes in there, it's good. I just want to ensure that I don't create a fairly certain pattern within it, within it all. Um, so I'm just moving it around, keeping it light, keeping it easy and ensuring that I'm keeping my point of light over here in mind. So here I'm just using white, and that was an accident. However, we can fix that, and we will fix that, by adding a little wash of brown over top. So I'm just continuing. I still have pigment and water upon my brush. I'm having fun with it. Just moving it around. And again, you'll notice that this side, darkest, the middle, brightest, and then over here it gets a little bit darker again, but not to the extent of the other side. So I'm just going to continue this until I'm finished, and then we will talk again after that. Now, something you'll notice, that a lot of the trees and branches that I've implied are in the background here, I've left black. While the ones in the foreground, I've made much more bright. You do want to create a depth within the branches themselves. So, say this is your tree, 
The front of the tree will have the most light hitting it. The back of the tree will have less and shadows will be hitting those branches from the ones in the foreground. So you want to ensure that the majority of the branches in the foreground get the most light and they'll normally be larger as well because as the branches get farther back, because of depth perception, they look smaller. So that's why I've only highlighted the branches within the foreground. And you'll notice that I used primarily white here and upon the black, because it was very watery, it kind of turned into a gray. And I like the gray look. I don't want all of it to be a stark white because you want your leaves or your flowers to be the most prominent popping thing within the painting, right? You don't want it to be the branches themselves. You want them to be kind of subdued, pushed back. They are there to hold up the leaves. So what I'm doing here now is I'm taking a little bit of brown, maybe a little mixture of green as well, and I'm just going to go over the white with a watery wash. I might move it around a little bit. But the whole idea here is to make sure that the white doesn't pop on the branches more than it does on our leaves. And you can do this with a variety of colors. Normally it will depend upon your atmosphere. I have a blue atmosphere so it probably should have a blue tint to it. Um, I might do that, I might not. Again, in these tutorials, there are things that I try to work out in about an hour or so. Just miniature paintings, getting ideas out there, and trying to help and share them with all of you. I'm doing this because a subscriber left a comment, sent me a message, said they wanted a cherry blossom tree. And I just wanted to help the guy out, seemed like a good person. And so here we are painting this now. But if I was really working on a painting, and say I was putting months of work into it, as opposed to an hour here, then I would be very aware of the coloring that I'm using, and the pigments, and I would ensure that I would probably include blues, reds, greens, like all of the colors in very subdued amounts, just to achieve the most depth that I could. However, if you're just beginning, if you're just having fun with it and you're learning, Doing a brown, a white, and a black is more than enough to have it pop and do its job. And you can learn later on how to incorporate all of the minute, subtle colorings. And honestly, I didn't start incorporating them until much later because I felt like it was really difficult and getting the basics of painting right first is so much more important. You really don't have to worry about the color that much at the beginning understand form, understand texture, patterning, uh, directional implications, and then from there, that's when I started working on color. But again, even here, we're just using very basic colors and it looks fine. So now I've collected all of the brown, I've put it over all of the white, there's little pieces of green in there and blue showing through in various areas. And so I think the branches are now done. So I'm going to move on to the petals themselves. So it is a cherry blossom tree and so the leaves of the flowers will be pink. However, the ones in the foreground will be the most pink and white. And we need to work on the background, the ones on the farthest end of the tree first. So they have to be a lot darker. So I'm just going to go in with a mixture of red and brown here on my brush. This is the type of brush, it's fairly thin on one side, but it's really messed up. It's uh, fairly roughed up. And I did that so it has kind of a random quality. And I'm just dabbing in various areas on the back branches where I would like to imply that there are little flowers. And again, it's not pink, but it's a cherry blossom tree. Why? Because they're not getting very much light. They're primarily in the shadow here and they're a lot darker, they're against a blue, and so I want it to look as if they are far away, or at least farther away than the ones that we will be putting in the foreground. And I'm doing this in a fairly random method. I'm picking an area that doesn't have a dominant branch, I'm just dabbing it on, using a lot of water as well. I'm doing that so I can get a lot out of my paint, and I don't want these to be fully opaque. I want to partially see through this area. And so by adding a lot of water, you ensure that it 
kind of has a translucent effect to it. It's not fully opaque. And I think that is incredibly important in this part of the process. Right now, you notice that I'm not painting and you're just looking at what I've done, sorry. I, when I do it live like this, I have to get water and more pigment. So I hate how you end up just watching a blank canvas for periods of time and I apologize. But again, we're trying out a new format here. Let me know if you like it or if you like the older, uh, more method. Uh, but again, we're trying out a new method here. Uh, let me know if you like it or the older, more laid out method. Do you want to incorporate a fair amount of these background colors because they're going to be a blueprint as well for where you put your foreground petals and or leaves. And so I want to cover a lot of area. That way I have various areas to choose from in regards to where I want to put all of those leaves. Now here you'll notice that I'm kind of connecting them, like I'm applying them in various uh, spherical kind of shapes. However, I am connecting them at various points. And I'm trying to put a lot of medium down in the middle and then I kind of pat it outwards. I'm kind of trying to bring it out as much as I can. Another thing to note within this process is that you can cover the main branches in various areas. Wherever you do that though, you should ensure that you are going to be putting the brightest flowers. So here, here, I know that I'm going to have very pink, very white flowers in the end. I'm just putting some implication down here. I'm not going to put any white down there, but I think having that little bit of a darker color really makes it have depth later on. And depth is incredibly important in painting. Having your darker colors and your more muted colors in the background and your brighter colors in the foreground, very important. Did you see that? That was finger painting. We learned that in kindergarten and something we never really should have let go of because it can be incredibly useful and you don't want to switch your brush or perhaps you're working in a time constraint or I don't know, perhaps it's just a cathartic way for you to paint and that's completely fine. We can all paint and various ways and have fun with it. There isn't any one right way to painting or creating. It's all about various techniques, how you apply it, who you are, what you like. Some people like to paint very aggressively. Some people like to paint very slowly. And it's really a choice thing because they both can render the same result. They can both render very different results. But you have to paint what you like in a way that you like so that you enjoy painting supposed to be something that's enjoyable. And so getting caught up in what's right and wrong isn't really the most important thing. It's the most important thing so that you enjoy. Anyways, all of that rambling out of the way, it seems that we've covered the majority of the tree in the way that we want to, for the back anyway. And now I'm going to move into more of a red and a pink in the foreground area. So right now, I'm just cleaning my brush, getting a little bit of red, getting a little bit of white, mixing pink, and then I'm picking various areas and doing little dabbing effects. I'm not really rubbing it in at this point like I was before. I'm just doing a dab and I'm backing off. A dab and I'm backing off. And we can get into little rough areas there like where it's really condensed. And there, see, I did blend it all together and that's a-okay. We can always go back here because we can always darken it with red or brown in a wash. For right now, I'm just kind of getting an idea of where I want all of these little petals to be. Something to note, you don't want it to look really mathematical. You want it to be random, so I'm connecting various areas, other areas I'm not. As my paint's running out on my brush, I'm trying to get more of the edges because it won't be as stark and you kind of get a nice blend outwards. And you have to be really careful around the edges. In the middle here, 
can be very rough and random and it's easy to fix. But once you get to the edges, the outskirts of the tree, not so much. So you have to be a little more cognizant of your brush strokes and your proceedings within the confines of that area. Here, I am rambling. <laughs> um, but anyways, I hope you're enjoying. And again, so these all started out as little circles, but we blended them outwards. And now they are in various areas, creating a plethora, a plethora, there we go, there's the correct pronunciation, of shapes. So again, the light's going that way, so I'm kind of implying that every cluster of leaves has one really light area and one really dark area. And again, we're using a rough brush like this, because when we make a stroke, it's making a bunch of them. It's making this really easy, not very time consuming. I'm a fan, especially for these little tutorials. Again, if this were something that I was spending months or even a year on, which I haven't shown anyone on the channel yet, anything that I've really been spending time on, because um, it's fairly different from this type of work. But that sort of thing, I'd probably go in with a brush like that and make every petal individually. I'd really take a lot of time with it. And if you want to spend a year on a painting, then I advise that. However, if you just want to dip your feet in the idea of painting this, having fun with it, then a big brush like this and a quick little 15 minute pat down here in a similar way is all you need. Now see, I added a little bit more pink there and a little bit more white and that's making it pop more. The idea is that we're always building up colors from darkest to lightest. And again, this side is going to have a lot brighter colors, this side is going to have a lot darker colors. Again, I'm running out of paint and water on my brush, so I'm just dabbing various areas that aren't going to be very uh, uh, that aren't really going to stand out, if you know what I mean. Again, getting tongue-tied, not used to this. I'm actually thinking about starting a painting podcast where I spend time on a really large piece of mine, something that I do spend a lot more time on. And I just talk to you about various art subjects while we paint together. I'm not sure. It's an idea, something you're interested in, let me know. And it'd be kind of fun, I think because then you could work on your painting, I could work on my painting. We could just have a little discussion in regards to art. And I don't know about you, but the town I'm currently living in, it's not extremely art focused. There aren't a lot of people who are really interested in art. So if I get an opportunity to talk about it with people who are equally as interested, I am ecstatic. Anyways, back to this painting. Um, you notice that I have clusters I do want to fill out the middle a little bit more. So here we're being very rough, just putting in pink, creating a very rounded shape here. But again, it goes out to the right. Now here I'm mixing even more white, creating more of a pop in various areas. Again, I want to really bring the middle up because I want it to be very three-dimensional. This is an easy way of doing that. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave it in the comments on this video or send me a message on my Facebook. Either or. Um, I always tell people on my Facebook, but I feel like I'm pushing it too much. But the fact of the matter is I'm just on there much more frequently than I'm on YouTube, so I can respond much quicker. However, I am trying to get in a better habit of checking YouTube every day and responding to all the comments that I can. At this point, the channel is still fairly small and that is still something that's achievable, which I really like. I like how we can all connect and talk the way we do. That being said, I'm also stressed. <laughs> Sorry, I'm also extremely happy when the channel grows and we get new subscribers. So if you want to share this video, I'd be incredibly happy and thank you.
Now the camera cut out and I'm not sure at which point, so I apologize if we're missing a little portion here. But you'll notice that now there's a lot of white here in the middle and I think it's even debatably too much. So I'm taking a very watery red and I'm just going along the edges of different portions, reevaluating the paints, putting the paints back in there. And if the red is too stark, again, we can just incorporate more white again. It's just about finding the proper balance of paints and whites and reds, browns in the background. And you'll notice that I have a blue background. I think blue and pink look really good together. So your background color is really going to affect this. If we had a very white background here and we had the white petals, then the white petals wouldn't really stand out. The background would take over. So you have to be cognizant of that. And a way to pick colors that go well together, I like to think of, well, A, you could use a proper color wheel. But if you're just beginning and you're having fun with it, I like to think of holiday colors. So red and green, they're complementary colors. They really stand out together. Or Valentine's Day, brown and pink. Different holidays and that sort of thing really put nice colors together and kind of create a nostalgic idea or mood behind it. So that's an easy way to kind of have fun with colors and just explore what kind of theme, message, or feeling you want to invoke within your painting. I think the tree itself is pretty much done. So I hope you enjoyed. I apologize for rambling on as much as I did. I've probably asked you a hundred questions throughout this. Please feel free to leave the answers in the comments below. I'm probably going to touch up the grass and the water and the sky, literally everything else right now. And I will see you in the next video. Again, if you have any questions, leave them below or on Facebook. If you do a similar piece like this and you want to show me or you want to critique, let me know, send it to me. I'd be more than happy to see it and help out in any way that I can. And I'm sure you did a beautiful job, regardless of your prior skill level. Because I think everyone's art can be really beautiful. Because it's all very individual. Everyone has their own technique or style. Even if you're learning from someone else, perhaps you can incorporate various things. But naturally, we all have our own way of doing things. And so, again, be very happy to see your work. I'm excited to paint with you again. Let me know what you think about the podcast idea where I ramble like this, the format. And if you liked it, please hit that like button. Yeah, hit that subscribe button. And maybe, maybe even share it with a couple friends on your social media. That really helps me beyond anything else. Grow this channel, find more artistic people, and kind of enjoy the creative side of YouTube and the internet here. Because I think that's something that's really wonderful with the internet. The way we can see everyone's work and kind of connect get inspired, work together, share ideas. It's really beautiful. But anyways, rambling again. I think I said goodbye about five minutes ago. Goodbye for real this time. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. I truly hope you enjoyed. And again, if you have any questions, if you got stuck along the way, please feel free to leave me a comment or send me a message on my Facebook page. Also, if you just want to share your work with me and get a little critique out of it, please feel free to send it to my Facebook. I'd be more than happy to look at it with you and talk about your work, and I'd love to see it as well. So thank you for watching, and take care. Well, we have reached the end of the video, and I truly hope you enjoyed and that you've learned something. I hope that you can take even a little piece from this and incorporate it within your art and have some fun with it. Now, all of that being said, if you have any questions regarding the tutorial, or you'd like me to critique your work or go through it with you, 
please feel free to leave me a comment down below. I'd be very happy to help. And if you want more of an immediate response or you'd like to share a picture of your work, please feel free to add me on Facebook. I have a link in the description of this video. And you can add me there, ask me questions, and I'd be incredibly happy to help you and walk you through whatever you are working on. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, if you've enjoyed this tutorial, A, I'm very happy. B, please hit that like button and the subscribe button. It really does help me grow this little art community and I'm just, I'd be incredibly appreciative if you did. I'm going to release videos weekly and I just hope you have a wonderful day. So take care and again, thank you for watching.